Hey everyone, I'm Sarah with Fisher Price Ranch. First off, please hit that subscription button down below and the notification bell for updates on our next videos. So we're getting close to that time of year and so I thought I'd kind of go over what we're going to be doing. Uh, I am still waiting on the blood test results on our three new goats. They should be here, uh, I believe Friday, Thursday or Friday we should be getting the results on those. So hopefully they can move into the herd. Um, so behind me is my whiteboard of goats and uh, we are going to start breeding season next Wednesday. So we've already got our breeding schedule figured out with who is going to go with which goat and I'll go over why. And then we're also going to show you guys where we're going to put them um, as far as our breeding pens. So let's get started. All right, so if you guys have not yet seen this, this is my whiteboard in my office. This is all about goats other than our monthly bills. You don't even want to see that. But, um, so I always have my head count, which I have gone over that before. This is what pen has how many goats and what kind, well, kind of what kind. My courtyard slash pasture, those are my does, and I have three kids in there. And then my weaning pen, my buck pasture, quarantine pen, and then my total number of goats. And then, of course, our feeding schedule, which has really calmed down quite a bit because our feeders um, hold so much food that we just fill them when they need it. And we just keep an eye on, on minerals and water every day. Um, we, <clears throat> we can cross that off because we don't have any more chicks in the incubator. No eggs, I mean. Um, we're going to get Thor in, which is our livestock guardian puppy. He needs his new rabies shot at the end of the month. And I'm seeing, um, because, okay, I did... Four bags of chicken feed in that that feeder I built, and I'm seeing how long they last. That's when I bought them. So I'm going to see how long the four bags of feed last my 20, 20 chickens. And uh, that way I can kind of guesstimate about how much they're costing me per month. And then we have our projects, of course. Um, all right, so these are our goats. This is all of them. These are all my girls. And then they're all the ones that are going to get bred. These are the three that I kept from this past kidding season. So they're obviously not old enough to breed yet. So I try and organize um, as best I can. And of course, the breeding schedule. This will all get erased and changed when they actually do start breeding. Because I like to keep it in order of due date. So right now... I have my 100% New Zealands, all my purebreds, 88%, 50%. So Bazooka, um, because we did lose his sire in January, we are going to let him have most of the does this year. So he's got the four New Zealand girls. Um, so he has the two new ones, which is Calliope and Pinky. And then he has Coconut, Cream, and Tipsy. And then we're also giving him Divinity. This will be her first time breeding. And then also he's going to get hopscotch, which is our black alpine doe. Now, I'll go over when we go and see the goats as to why who is getting who. Um, so this year, because last year Rocky Road got most of our girls, he's only getting a couple. So he's going to get Bonnie. And then he is going to get Dippin' Dot. And then we have our new boy, which is Wrecker. And unfortunately, I've already got most of this figured out. So he's only going to get three girls this year as well. So he's going to get Beauty. He's going to get Sabrina. And then he's going to get our other Alpine, Goldie. And then Buddy is getting three. He's going to get Trinidad, Truffles, and Marsala, our Alpine, um, Son and Cross. So I wrote these out as far as class. This is what the babies will be, not necessarily what the parents are. So we'll only have 4% the rest are purebred or New Zealand. So that's kind of how I organize what I'm doing as far as breeding season goes. And this will all be erased, like I said, and changed as the good does get bred and I'll keep them in order. All right, and a quick update. We finally did get our yard a little bit more organized. Looks a lot better. We still have our flagstone that we need to figure out where we're going to put that. Um, I don't know if you guys just saw that bird that flew by. But she used our uh, goat's cashmere <laughs> and built a little nest. 
See if I can show you guys, whoops, what's going on in there. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's a couple eggs for you. So I've been keeping an eye on her nest. It's actually right next to our bedroom window so I can see her from my bed. And uh, so if you guys want, I will keep you updated on her babies when they are due. Now she is a Says Phoebe. And I am a birder, so I know most of the birds around here. Um, so anyway, she has been sitting on eggs for a little while. She's in the trees right there. I don't know if you guys saw her moving around. But I can post a quick picture um, of what she looks like so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Alright, so I'm going to quickly go over the boys and their characteristics that I look for and that way it explains why I chose which girls to go with them. Um, so Buddy, um, he throws very wide kids because he has the nice wide back and they're very fast growing and uh, so I really like that and he has the fast growing horns, he looks really good. So. Um, I tried to breed him to Trinidad last year, but she was kind of a hussy, and she ended up getting bred without me knowing, and uh, got bred by Charlie. So this year, for sure, Buddy is going to get her, I swear. <laughs> Breeding season never goes as planned. There is our nasty buck. This is what they do. They pee on their faces. That is why Buddy is no longer white in the face. He's all yellow and brown. Um, so Rocky Road... He throws very nice kids, fast growing, nice and thick, lots of color, and uh, because he gave us so many kids last year, he's only going to get the two, so I'll show you guys his girls. Now as far as our projects go, I am still working on, we need to put all of our materials in one pile instead of multiple, because we've got piles everywhere. It'll help organize the place a little bit better. Here's Wrecker. Now, I have not used him yet. He's our new guy. and But he is becoming super friendly. I don't even have to have treats anymore. He just, he, <laughs> he's a funny guy. Um, but I really like his height and um, his long legs. And so I, I'm going to breed him to some of my shorter girls and see if we can get slightly taller. Um, he also should throw color because he has the... Uh, spots and he's got his little waddles so those will be cute huh and I have seen pictures of his kids and they're really nice and thick so we're just gonna try him out on a few does and see how he does And the next year he'll definitely get a lot more girls all right so I don't know if you guys have followed on my Facebook at all but we are having major fires here in Arizona there's a lot of big wildfires going on right now, and it is so smoky out here. Um, so unfortunately, we are kind of dealing with that, and I'm hoping it's not going to bother the goats too much. Luckily, the fires are still a ways away from us, but that doesn't mean anything. We could have a fire spark up at any time, especially when people are not being safe. Went out in the woods, and I've seen people dragging chains. It's just horrible. Smoking outside. Um... So anyway, you can kind of see the haze, you know, the sun's not very bright, it's being kind of, it's got that, that sheen of, of smoke over it. So we're definitely keeping an eye on the fires just to make sure that they don't hit us, hit us too close to home. Alright, so today is a very hot day, it is actually in the 90s, for us that's very hot. So here's our girls. Uh, let me real quick show you Bazooka. Yeah, he heard me talking to him. Bazooka, come here, bud. Here he is. Hi. Here's Bazooka. So he is growing like a weed. He is quite big. Um, I haven't weighed him recently, but at 150 days, he was about 70 pounds. So that's very exciting. Now... I really like his genetics. Uh, we did lose his sire back in January, if you guys saw that video. So I'm mostly using him because I need more of his genetics, and I love the genetics. Very fast-growing kids, great quality. 
Um, I do have his half sister, which I'll show you as another comparison, which is this doe on the tire. And you can see how nice and thick she is. Very well built. Nice stocky girl, aren't ya? Yeah, you're a pretty girl. She looks like her mama. Who's Bonnie right up there? So anyway, Bazooka is gonna get all the New Zealand does. That way we can get more New Zealands. We don't have a lot on our farm. I tend to like the purebreds a little bit better, but some of our New Zealands this year have made me quite happy. Now, Tipsy is one of them. Um, she came to us with kind of a bum leg, but she gets around just fine. But she is super thick, very well built, nice thick heavy doe. She's, um, she weighed in at about 136 pounds um, when she had just weaned off kids. So she has actually gained some more weight. So she, she, I would say she's probably 145, maybe even a little bit more. But she looks very, very good. So uh, we're hoping for nice thick kids out of this one. Um, nice wide, wide back on her. And then our two new girls, which are actually already in with Bazooka. I knew he wouldn't breed them right away, and they're not even in heat. But I needed them separated. That way they can gain their weight back really nice. And uh, so this is Pinky. And then Calliope is hiding in the barn there. And these came from Vanessa. And I'm very excited, whoops, to uh, see what they produce for me. Vanessa is very good at picking out does that are exactly what I'm looking for. So they were, they had just weaned off kids, um, I think four month old does, and I'm letting them dry up, letting them gain their weight before we get breeding. And then, so he'll get those, so that's three for him. Um, Divinity, to give you guys an idea, this is Buddy's daughter, so our white buck. This is his daughter from last year that we kept, and you can see how nice and thick she is, so you can see what Buddy is throwing. Huh, girl. Nice and thick, very wide back for a doe, very well built. And uh, so because Bazooka is a very fast growing buck, we're going to let him breed her in hopes that we'll keep those nice genetics going. And then Bazooka will also get our Alpine doe, Hopscotch. Now the reason I chose this doe instead of Goldie, our other Alpine who's hiding over there, um, is this doe t is actually longer legged and a little bit leaner. So because Bazooka has heavy goats in his line, I'm hoping that the cross of the two should give me a good um, set of kids that have a little bit of both, you know, the longer legged but have a little bit more meat on their bones. Uh, we're crossing the alpines in to add dairy, and as you can see, we're actually getting ready to dry the girls up, but they produce a lot of milk. She actually gives about a gallon and a half a day if you uh, milk her twice a day. All right, and as for Bazooka's last doe, now this doe is not yet given us kids. She's actually hiding down here. She's 100% New Zealand, and... Uh, she is actually half-sister to Rocky Road, so we cannot use Rocky on her. And so Bazooka is our only other 100% New Zealand. So I'm hoping the cross will do well. And uh, I'm hoping she gives us kids. She's actually on the border, on the fence, um, for being cold if she does not give us kids, unfortunately. Um, she had a miscarriage last year. I, I'm assuming she just got rammed, and I'm hoping that's all it was. But uh, we're going to give her another chance and see what happens. All right, so our new guy, Wrecker, he is gonna get Beauty. Now, uh, she's a purebred doe, and she throws very nice kids, no matter who she's bred to. She's a very wide set doe, and all of her kids have also been that way. I actually have one of hers um, that I can show you guys, but she's a little bit on the short side, and so I'm thinking with as tall as Wrecker is, they'd be a really great cross, and they should give nice color too, because she, she has got some color on her. Now her daughter is right over here hiding in the tire. Um, this is Truffles and you can see how nice and thick she is. Hi pretty girl. 
how you doing? But she's really nice and wide, just like her mother, and she always throws that. And so, um, definitely, I think Beauty will do very well with Wrecker. So, Wrecker is also going to get Sabrina. Now, Sabrina is another purebred, and she was bred with Rocky Road last year. And this is actually one of the kids that we kept right here. Peppermint, my sweet girl. Sabrina has a very nice temperament, and she definitely passes it along to her kids. This is all natural for her. I did not spoil this goat, I swear. <laughs> so I think, um, I'm hoping actually that we might get some color this year. She did give me that chocolate dough, which was really nice. Um, but she throws beautiful kids no matter what, what she's bred to. But, uh, so we're going to try her with Wrecker. Now Wrecker is also going to get um, our other Alpine dough. And this girl, this girl is only, um, I want to say a year and a half. She was a first freshener this last year, and she's giving us a gallon a day. And so we're just going to breed them together, add a little bit of dairy in there, and uh, go for that size. So I'm not really sure what we'll get here, but um, that's what we're going to do. So that's what Wrecker is going to get. All right, so now for Buddy... Buddy's going to get Marsala, which is this big girl. Now, she came to us as a rescue. Um, she was clean of disease, which is great. She uh, really needed copper. She's finally shedding out that winter coat, so she's going to look really good. But she's definitely gained all of her weight. She looks great, nice and healthy. And uh, she was, when she was thin, she was 136 pounds. So I have no doubt she's at least 145, 150 and uh, I really like her bilge as a nice top line and so we're gonna breed her into the Kiko and see what we can get there so she's gonna be bred with Buddy and then Buddy is also gonna get Beauty's daughter so the one that we looked at that was hiding in the tire the black and white one is Truffles they like to chill out in here there she is <laughs> there you are so this will be Truffles first year getting bred and uh, so we're going to breed her with Buddy. And then Buddy is also going to get Tr uh, Trinidad, which is this big girl. And she's the one that we tried to breed him to last year. But she said, no way. And so this year, no matter what, she's getting bred with Buddy. Uh, I really like her kids. We kept one from last year, and, or I guess earlier this year. And she throws really nice kids, gave us triplets, and she's just a real hefty doe. She's 156 pounds, and uh, because Buddy throws this, I think they'll be a great cross for big meat goats. This is Trinidad's daughter that we kept from last year. And she's a nice looking doling, very long, long body, and uh, long legged. She definitely took after her father as far as structure, I think, um, but fast growth, just like Trinidad. So that's really good. So last but not least, we have Rocky Road, and he's only getting a, hey, watch it, a couple girls, and Bonnie is one of them. So Bonnie is being bred every year by a different buck, and no matter who she's bred to, she always gives us gorgeous kids. Um, so Rocky Road has not yet bred this doe, so we're going to see how she does there. Bonnie's definitely one of those does that produces amazingly and will probably stay here, stay here her entire life. So we'll see what they give us. And then Rocky Road is also, if I can remember all these goats I have, I'm trying to remember who else he's getting. Give me a moment. <laughs> Okay, I remember. It took me a second. Um, he's going to get Dip and Dot, which is one of our yearlings. And the reason for that breeding is more just for fun. Um, he throws really nice kids. So um, this girl, her mom was quite big. And her dad, which was Phantom's Maestro, um, he was more the long-legged, thinner type. But she definitely took after her mother. But um, from her father's side, she has spots. You can see one right there. And so we figure maybe if we breed the two together, we might get some more spots. <laughs> so that one's just more for fun. She's my only blue-eyed goat that I still have. And so they're more of a fun type. But, I mean, who knows? I could get some really nice kids out of that breeding. Because, like I said, her mother was quite a large doe. So we'll see how that goes. She is pretty well built. 
So, anyway, that one's just going to be more for fun, but also could end up being a very nice cross. All right, so as you can see, trying to keep everything in order is very difficult. That's why I have it all written down, because I'll forget. And even even though we just looked at the, the whiteboard, I still had to try and remember who was going with who. Um, that's why definitely it is written down. So now I'm going to show you guys real quick how we're going to put them into breeding pens, because I don't have any breeding pens that are specific for breeding. I did last year, and it was a wreck. We had bucks getting out with wrong does, and it was just a mess. So it was surprises on the babies. So this year we're hoping it's going to get... A little bit better so let me show you what we decided to do all right so we decided to use the pastures as our breeding pens and no we have still yet to plant this pasture it's been so hot and dry and when we planted over there I'll show you what's going on over there it's kind of a mess so anyway what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this pasture as a breeding pen we'll we'll lock the gate closed and we'll open up this weaning pen that way they have a shelter, they have food and water that they can get into. And we'll probably put Bazooka in here with his does. Since he has the most girls and he's already with two of them, I think we'll just kind of move his other four girls in here. Open up this gate and close the, um, this gate. That way they're stuck in this pen. So next we are going to move Buddy. He will go move over here he will go into this pasture this middle one and they'll have that barn way up there so we'll put food and water up in that barn keep this side closed so these guys can't get in here and we'll open up this side so they have shelter food and water in this one and of course they'll have some grass to munch on and we'll close this gate here and then we'll have our last pasture which we'll put wrecker because he's our biggest buck so I'll we'll give him the most space with his girls and because he's much more hardy, not saying that the other goats are not, but he has been on pasture most, if not his whole life. I think it's been his whole life. And so he's used to being out there without a lot of shelter. Now there are a lot more trees in this pen, so they'll have plenty of shelter and we'll put food and water in here for them. And then we're in the buck pen in the back, we're going to leave Rocky Road back there since he has the least amount of does. We'll only have to move two back there for him. So that's kind of what's going to go on with our breeding. Uh, we'll definitely go over it more as we're actually moving the goats and um, get everybody set up into their own pens and show you guys that. And we will definitely do a video on how to tell when the does are in heat and what to watch for. So really quick, I'm going to show you guys what's going on in here. Now, you saw in our one of our last videos that we did plant in this pasture. I've been watering it every single day. And there's nothing. There's just nothing. It has been so dry and windy and nothing is wanting to grow. So I've been putting this extra sprinkler out here from the hose. And wherever I have the sprinkler, it's coming up because it stays more wet by the sprinkler. You can see the grass and the legumes are coming in. So I'm thinking, because it only does a small area, so you can see the sprinkler there, it's only doing that much. <laughs> so it's kind of ridiculous. The seeds are still good because they haven't been soaked enough to grow. Um, so I'm thinking what we're going to do is, I mean, I'm still going to water. I actually quit watering every day because the seeds are not coming up and I'm just wasting water. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to water every other day just to keep the ground damp. And monsoon season is just around the corner. I'm thinking that when the rains actually do hit, that this should really start to grow and I can always throw some more seed if I have to but at this point I feel like I'm just wasting water trying to get all these seeds to come up and uh, our water bill is like 200 bucks a month it's getting a little bit insane now this sprinkler over here has the least amount of pressure and it doesn't spin very well so it just kind of sits in one spot so I've been changing it to where it sits because if you look over here where it's been sitting, it's coming up really well. Lots of green, lots of legumes and grass. 
So I'm just gonna slowly rotate that sprinkler and it just waters one spot forever and it seems to help. But yeah, it's just, it's not doing too well. I, I should have definitely got this planted much sooner in the year before it got too hot. But uh, so here's one of my mistakes that you guys can learn from plant early <laughs> before it gets too hot and the ground just dries up way too fast. Um, you can see all of our weeds are coming up and uh, which the goats love. They love the weeds except for this mullein, the big leafy stuff. They don't like the mullein. Uh, for those of you that don't know what that is, uh, also called toilet paper to those, <laughs> the big fuzzy leaves. It's actually a really good herb, good for your lymphatic system, uh, also earaches, the, the yellow flowers that grow on there. You can make a tea for ear infections. Um, but anyway, so that's kind of what's going on. So pretty much the pastures are on hold, I think, until monsoon season hits. Because it's just too hot and dry, and it's it's getting to be more work, costs way too much money for no outcome right now. All right, guys, so that's kind of what's going on and what will be coming in a week and a half. Uh, so I will definitely film us getting the goats in with their specific bucks, and I will videotape and show you what to watch for when your does do go into heat. Every goat is a little bit different. Some can hide it very well, others, you know. <laughs> they're loud, they're noisy, all night long, 2 o'clock in the morning. I have to warn my neighbors whenever it's breeding season because otherwise they, they call me or come down here thinking something's dying. Uh, so anyway, that's definitely what we get to look forward to very soon. And uh, I'll keep you guys updated on the new goats and when their tests come in. And then we'll get started again on the pastures probably in a few weeks. It should We should be getting rain here pretty quick. Usually middle of July it'll hit really good. So hopefully we'll get some nice rains before then. And maybe we could start before it gets too heavy of rain. And it'll probably wash away our seed. That's why I was trying to get it done before. That way when the heavy rains do hit it's already growing and it wouldn't wash anything away. But unfortunately, it's just too dang dry and hot. So anyway, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.